Well, so a lot of criminal cases uh, we are seeing there, and of definitely top of the list is uh, that um, a cop who was widely perceived as a crime buster now getting 15 years jail term for murder. We have our investigative editor, Dennis Onsarigo, on set. He's covered various um, criminal cases, including that of Katito, one on Madheri, and of course, Philip Onyancha, who now the case has been declared um, his trial. Let's just take a look at some of the works he's done on the same before we get into a conversation on the same. Geoffrey Maderi, alias Fongo, having confessed to killing hundreds of women, is now a free man. A court in Nakuru freed him for lack of evidence. Tonight on Case Files, the return of Maderi starts now. When Case Files met up with Geoffrey Maderi, alias Fongo, the one time street urchin turned vampire, his piercing eyes, arresting look and a deadly demeanor had those near him turn away in fear. This was the face of a vampire, a title bestowed on Maderi by residents of the dusty Naivasha town, railing from one capital crime to another. Maderi, just like the self-confessed serial killer Filippo Nyancha, had earned himself a name in the media, a cannibal. At Naivasha Maximum Security Prison, Maderi was serving a five-year sentence for kidnapping. The prosecution had proved their case against the 26-year-old man linked to a spread of murders in the town in the run-up to the 2008 post-election violence. All right, that's just some of the cases there or the stories that our investigative editor here has uh, worked on. But majorly, Adisa, I want us to talk about um, the ruling that was made yesterday where the tough cop, Titus Musila, also known as Katito, has now been jailed, will be jailed for 15 years um, uh, in that particular legal battle. Um, remember, he was widely perceived to be a crime buster. But uh, Dennis Onsarigo actually did work on this particular story. You seeing this ruling yesterday and having done a lot of background investigation on it, did you expect it? Um, the ruling was um, expected, mm -hmm. but um, I think the family expected more. Mm -hmm. The family wanted um, a life sentence mm -hmm. um, handed down on this killer cop. Remember, this mm -hmm. man has killed two family members. Mm -hmm. um, I hear from the family that they're also planning to have him prosecuted for the killing of their elder brother. Mm -hmm. The man he killed one year later, mm -hmm. allegedly killed one year later. So this ruling was expected. But again, the time he has spent in prison, um, the, the kind of work he has done yeah. out there, yeah. I think the judge took this into consideration and mm -hmm. decided to hand him what I can call a lenient sentence. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is a lenient? I, I mean, according to the family, yeah. this was very lenient, yes. Uh, yes. But um, there were protests after uh, his arrest and most residents from Gidurai said, this man has done well for us in terms of busting crime. I mean, what would it mean for them? Uh, this man was very popular among residents who were being terrorized by, by youth, but mm. he was feared among the youth. I mean, you have a policeman linked to many killings in this area because apparently he was a sharpshooter one and he was a crime buster. Mm. So residents wanted someone who can take shortcuts yeah. and bring to an end high case, <laughs> bring to an end um, spiraling crime mm. in that place. Mm. But and when we did case files on, on this uh, killer cop, we got a backlash from members of the public who were saying you should come and live in Gidurai. Yeah. But again, civil societies and um, human rights organizations were saying when you allow police to take law into their hands, what happens tomorrow if they kill your own mother mm -hmm. or your brother and then they say he was a, he was a killer? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a process, there's a working criminal justice system. Have someone arrested, take him to court. If the yeah. court decide he has to go in for 15 years, let him go in, he has to go in for life, let him go in for life, yes. I mean, from your experience, we've just shown you've worked on a lot of these cases. Um, from where you sit, what, what do you think makes police officers now get to this point where they just break the law? The criminal justice system is a mess in this country, but over the years, something is being done. Remember, 
the law was changed to give security of tenure to mm -hmm. the director of public prosecutions mm -hmm. seven years and for you to remove him from office you have to put in place yeah. a tribunal of sorts mm -hmm. uh, this was supposed to strengthen the criminal justice system mm -hmm. the courts are freer now to rule on cases mm -hmm. without interference from the state mm -hmm. but the prosecuting arm of government, which is largely left to the police, has been doing a very dismal job. So you have people being taken to court on flimsy grounds. Sometimes there's no evidence. You cannot convict someone for murder if, for example, there's no post-mortem report in getting this person died. Mm -hmm. Okay, you cannot take someone to court like they did in 2008. Um, where they took a police officer in Kisumu, caught on camera, yeah. killing a protester. Mm -hmm. But cleverly, the prosecuting arm of government, which happens to be the police, mm -hmm. they took this man to court and changed the serial numbers of mm -hmm. the guns used. The judge had no choice but to let him go. Yeah. In this particular case, mm -hmm. the judge has to st had to step in when the prosecuting arm of government came up with evidence to, before court mm -hmm. and they said they are not sure which gun was used in killing this man. Yeah. In any case, mm -hmm. this man should have been set free. Mm -hmm. But the judge stepped in and said, you cannot bring 10, 11 witnesses mm -hmm. before this court of law. And then all of them are, yeah. are, are giving evidence in support of the killer mm -hmm. cop. So the judge had to step in. And okay. hand, in, hand this man. All right. The kind I want, of us, I want us to bring in uh, Cliff Mbeta, as uh, who was the lawyer for Titus Musila, who now has gotten 15 years of jail term for murder. Uh, very good morning to you. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on KTN News Center. Do you think justice? There was justice for your client. Um, I, I might just. Uh differ a little bit because uh, in as much as he has been found guilty by the court and in as much as he has been jailed for 15 years, I tend to think that uh, we have already even uh, put a notice for appeal and we believe that uh, this case was actually not judged on its merits, but we believe it was judged on sentiments. Because in as much as the, 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 the court has said that uh, this guy has been found guilty, remember, the gun that was used in this case has not been found. Secondly, there were three police officers on duty on that day who all shot using their guns. The bullet that was found in the back of the skull that uh, actually was said in the postmortem that caused the death of the deceased was not from the gun that Katito was using on that particular day. So we are saying that if then that bullet was not from his gun and three officers have used their guns, who then did it? Why were those two other officers not charged or called as witnesses? So there was an allegation that, they, that, that uh, there was a cover-up by the police and, uh, to try and defend one of their own. But this was not evidence on record. It was only an allegation. Nobody ever proved that Katito had an extra gun or evidence that he ever carried another gun. So when he sees that he shot in the air three times and there is no bullet that has been found in that head that belongs to him, the, the benefit must be there. And that's the benefit of doubt that must always be visited upon the accused person. But in any case, he has been found guilty. But the, and the court has decided. I tend to think the 15 years that they have given is, uh, is, 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 is good in, relation to, in, in comparison to the hanging yeah. that would have been there. Are we, are, we and, going uh, to, are we going to see him appeal? Oh, yes. We have already filed a notice already. Yeah. We have already filed a notice. We, 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 we knew that uh, the sentence would be right, so we had prepared in advance because uh, we still believe that we can appeal this case and, and win. So the, tw the 15 years, then there is the three years probation, which is uh, after the 12 years, mm. um, is okay. And uh, by the way, he might serve up about approximately nine years only because uh, of the time that he spent in custody as well. Yeah. Yes, and the court had put that into consideration. Um, so really, if he was guilty, which the court has found him, yeah. then the sentence is not uh, realistic. It is, it is pretty lenient. I'm in studio with our investigative editor here on KTN News, Dennis Onsarigo. He's just sampling for us some of the instances where he thinks um, the prosecution did a, a, a shoddy job. And from what you're saying, um, are you at a point where you're thinking once again the prosecution failed on this as the lawyer for, yes, for it, Titus Musila? The prosecution actually brought the, the initial witnesses who were in this case. Were witnesses they brought were people who, who actually said that it was a good person and that these guys were robbing people on this particular day. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, the moment a person has been found robbing and is running away, 
mm-hmm. and you want you, you want to stop him how do you do it is it by shooting in the air is it by shooting at him katitu says he shot in the air nobody has come to prove that he never actually shot in the air the cartridges that were found at that particular area and the, the cordoning off of that area the police did a shot job they should have cordoned off the area pick the cartridges that were found on that particular day and uh, use them uh, uh, examine them and see whether they are the ones so what what they did on this particular day with the police they never seen the they, they cordoned off the scene and uh, it was interfered with this again in the in, in, in now that evidence has been lost there this is something that should have been used for the for the purpose of uh, the benefit for the accused person and and, and uh, we, we believe that uh, uh, the evidence that they gave now trying to say that he was he had killed another brother and all that that is what was used for the purpose of sentiment yes they said there was sentiment that was being used in this particular case because now the family is coming up oh brother has been killed his mother threatened us and all that this threat was never even proved that he threatened the family the family took advantage of this situation to relocate and when they were called to come and testify and come ev- to give evidence about this case they never turned up so everything about this case was a mess and believe me we we in, 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 we believe that in a higher court right now uh this evidence cannot speak remember the cases that you were you're discussing for the kisumu case where by a person was shot and the and the gun that was used uh, was was different or or the serial number was changed then the question is that was only a serial number look at this one this is the bullet that has gone for examination that has been found not to be the one from uh, Katsu gun why shouldn't we get that benefit as well Thank you very much for speaking to us here on KTN News Center. Cliff Ombete is a criminal lawyer and um, was the lawyer for Titus Musila, also known as Katito, in that particular case. I mean, from, from picking up from where he's left it from. And uh, when I asked you about why police officers get to a point where they just choose to break the law, is it that they also do not believe in the criminal justice system in the country? Or they they frust- think it's, 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 it's a frustrated uh, lot. You, you have... Um, policemen arresting people taking them to jail and they are released and of course released on the basis of no evidence yeah. you can't keep someone in jail if you don't have evidence against them so they decide let's take the shortcut let's have them killed mm-hmm. so if it wasn't for human rights organizations if it wasn't for the independent police oversight authority and independent medical legal unit mm-hmm. katitu will be a free man now and if this man appeals trust me like the case of uh, Edward Kirui the policeman who was caught on camera shooting a protester in Kisumu this man would walk to freedom he will that is how things are that, that's how it stand. works and, and and remember um the national police service is designed in a way that one unit does what another unit doesn't know mm-hmm. that confusion is easy for you to run um, to run um, a, a police service yes. it, it, it allows you, you know to have a uniformed way of thinking mm-hmm. these are trained policemen uh, they think in one direction they get orders in one direction when you have everyone thinking in one direction mm-hmm. you're staring at quote unquote a mutiny for example uh-huh. people can decide not to go to work mm-hmm. uh, but they work under very extreme um, uh, conditions yes. they are frustrated mm-hmm. they put in many hours mm-hmm. but most of the time they are never held to account for example katitu had 15 rounds of ammunition he could only account for 12 the chief amara said we could only find 12 bullets in 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 in, in, his, in his gun yeah. so where were the, the other three, three yeah. for for them to be 15 mm-hmm. because the other two policemen handed in their guns mm-hmm. 14 bullets 14 bullets because they fired twice mm-hmm. but katitu convicted himself by placing himself at the scene of the murder mm-hmm. he placed himself there and there's a star witness who saw him shoot this man three times that's the man who convicted him mm-hmm. yes so this particular case i mean do you think it will set any precedence what, what will it mean for future engagements especially with police officers and, and breaks down the morale cases. of the police yeah. people understand the criminal justice system does not work or it, it is in favor of mm-hmm. criminals. Mm-hmm. Um, in this country, if you're a murder suspect, you're allowed by law to be released on bail yeah. unless the judge feels you're likely to interfere with mm-hmm. witnesses. But you're allowed. Way before the 2010 enactment of the new constitution, you could not be allowed, uh, you could not be set, you could not be tried uh, out on bail pending trial. Yeah. Okay. But in this particular case, um, people have been given a chance before the law. But remember, um, impunity, the law is blind to impunity. Mm. So if 
the judge had the evidence before him. The killer cop has been convicted. It will bring down the morale of the police force. And as we speak now, it's only it's not only on better was um, was um, was planning to appeal. Yeah. The National Police Service, the Inspector General of Police mm -hmm. himself, he has said he's going to appeal again as his sentence. Mm -hmm. But it sends two messages mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. If you are licensed to carry a gun, if you are allowed by law to use a gun, then use it responsibly. Mm -hmm. That's one. And again, if you're a policeman, then you understand the parameters of the law. You can't yeah. operate outside the law. Mm -hmm. That brings down the morale of the police, but again, makes them more accountable. Mm -hmm. We have had major convictions in the past, but when they go for, for an appeal, mm. they're always set free. But going in for nine years, when you say you've killed 100 suspects out there, when people are demonstrating mm. in your mm. name, mm. having members of parliament and senators paying bail for you, you feel you've been thrown under the bus. But that's how the criminal justice system yeah. in this, this country works. Yeah. But, but like as you, as you talk about uh, protests, in the name of Katitu and the kind of support he received from residents. This was a case that was highly publicized. It had a lot of public interest. Do you think that in any way? Because uh, Ombeta says that he feels the case was ruled uh, based on sentiments. Do you think that played into the kind that of evidence that really? was brought before the judge? I'm not a lawyer, I'm not mm, a judge. Definitely. Yeah, but going through the files, this case. If this case was being held in a private room somewhere, this mm -hmm. man will have walked to freedom. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was given 15 years for killing someone mm -hmm. and for direct evidence mm -hmm. placing him at the scene of the murder, yeah. this man should have been jailed for life. Mm -hmm. But because of the public interest, the judge also say that the media somehow tried to influence the outcome of, yes. of the case. But remember, he had already been convicted. He was awaiting sentencing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we could have done. Mm -hmm. He was placed on his defense. Uh, he was supposed to be sentenced. So we were within, quote unquote, mm -hmm. the law <laughs> of the judiciary yeah. to comment on a yes. case like this because mm -hmm. it, it had generated huge public interest. Remember, Katitu himself mm -hmm. fielded questions from a journalist mm -hmm. when he was in remand. Yeah. He should not have done that, but he did because of the interest this case yeah, generated. Yeah, okay. And from where I see it, he had a feeling he was supposed to walk to freedom. Mm -hmm. Maybe four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been in jail for four years. Yeah. Jail him for another one year. Mm -hmm. He'll be in for six months remission. He's out and out in the field. But mm -hmm. remember, the independent medical legal unit, the family's lawyer, are planning to have him again charged for killing. The older Another brother. member yes, of, the of the family. Yes. Wow. Interesting case. Thank you very much for uh, coming in. Uh, Dennis Ansarigo is our investigative editor here on KTN News. Once again, thank you for making time for us here. Um, uh, as we just explore that particular ruling against uh, Titus Mesila, also known as um, Katito, who's just gotten 15 years. Um, uh, uh, for murder and we've also spoken to his lawyer who said they will be or they already have started the process of appealing this particular case.